Hey everyone, hope you're having an amazing day. It's Mark Wiens and I am in Satun, which is in the very far south of Thailand. And there is a man who has an entire garden. He's dedicated his life to growing pitcher plants. And he's so passionate about pitcher plants, which are some of the most fascinating plants in the world. And not only does he grow them, but he eats them and he cooks them. He prepares a special snack with pitcher plants. Uh, so I'm very excited and I'm gonna share it all with you in this video. We just arrived to the farm and we're gonna start walking around or it's, it's a garden actually, a beautiful garden. Piwarawit. We just met up with Piwarawit. He's immediately getting started talking about the, explaining to us about the pitcher plants. And just, you can already sense his passion and his love. And even his t-shirt has the pitcher plant. That's awesome. The first thing you said is that the pitcher plant, the pitcher actually forms at the bottom of a leaf. So the leaf, so this is the main plant right here. The leaves come down and the pitcher forms at the bottom of the leaf. Uh, now, a pitcher plant is carnivorous. It uh, has a it has a pitcher, and then water is below, and somehow it gives off a sweet scent or a seat. Or it even has a sweet taste, so it attracts ants, it attracts flies, it attracts insects, which then get trapped into the pitcher, into the water below, uh, and then the insects decompose, and the plant actually needs that nutrients to develop. And I've been fascinated by pitcher plants for many years, ever since seeing some in the jungle many, many years ago for my first time. Uh, but so his, he has an entire garden here, lots of different plants, lots of varieties, but his, definitely his passion is pitcher plants. So he has a number of varieties. We're gonna first walk around. Uh, he's gonna show us some of the plants, some of the pitcher plants, and then, after that, I think we'll have a chance to maybe make the pitcher plants cook. I'm not sure exactly how they prepare them, but I know they stuff them with sticky rice. We'll make them and we'll eat them. These ones are really cool. That's an entire, that's a whole cup size, a pitcher. Uh, and these ones he said are from the jungle of Sumatra in Indonesia. Just thinking back, I think I might have seen my first pitcher plant in the jungle when I was in Sumatra about, oh, that was a long time ago, uh, 10 or 12 years ago. But this one is beautiful. It's so complex, it's so unique, and the splotchy colors are so interesting. There's hairs, there's spikes, there's the lid. Oh, there are insects inside too, if you look. And we're moving back to, he kind of has a greenhouse set up Looks like pitcher plants need a lot of water. He has a, like, kind of a damp canopy set up here to make it extra damp, like a rainforest floor. Some of the pitcher plants grow hanging from the leaf. Others almost seem to come out of the, like, sit on the soil, on the surface of the soil. And if you look at some of the varieties too, some are just hanging vertical, others are hanging horizontal. Oh, and it's full of water. Here's the variety of pitcher plant that we're gonna eat today. Really red one. Not too big, but it's a perfect little, it is a perfect little pitcher. He also explained to us that he has four main varieties of pitcher plants that he grows here. Such a cool garden dedicated to the pitcher plant. Although he has some other cool, very exotic looking plants as well. Just trying to get a peek inside of this pitcher plant. Oh, looks like there's water, but I don't see any insects yet. This guy's still waiting for the insects to come. So they've already harvested an entire plate of the pitcher plants that we're gonna eat. They're gonna stuff with sticky rice. It might be kind of a, a sweet, uh, but he said you can eat them raw. He said they're really good with chili dip. We don't have any chili dip right now. But that thing is amazing. It's, it's amazing how thin it is. You can eat it raw. Um, you can stuff it with anything you could. What It could have so many uses because it's a natural cup. It's a pitcher. Um, and this has been cleaned out already. <laughs> There's no, oh, and by the way, the insects come and oftentimes poo inside of the pitcher plants. All right, I'm excited. My first time to, to try a pitcher plant. Should I go the, the bottom or the top? I'll go top. Mm. Oh, wow. It's sour like a mango leaf or 
like a cashew tree leaf. A little bit chalky, but juicy. Whoa, really juicy. It tastes a little bit like apple skin, a green apple skin. Well, but kind of more, more chalky. That is unique and crisp and green and sour. What a, what a skin. With the pitcher plant, they're gonna make more of a snack, a sweet snack. So sugar, coconut milk, a little bit of salt, and it's gonna be butterfly pea flower uh, water, which has been soaked already just to give it a blue color. And then they're gonna mix that with sticky rice and then stuff it into the pitcher plants and then I think steam them. So it's almost gonna be like a, a new form or a different form, a pitcher plant, sticky rice mango, but without the mango and instead pitcher plant. <laughs> As he's stirring in that sticky rice now, that beautiful purple blue color from the butterfly pea but we were just asking him about how he got started growing pitcher plants. Uh, he graduated with a degree in horticulture, I believe, and then he, he had a passion. He, I mean, he has a passion for pitcher plants, but in this area, there is jungle, but then there's a lot of the forest. There's been a lot of deforestation in south of Thailand, uh, especially to provide land for rubber tree farming as well as oil palm farming and so he said the pitcher plants really need the really wet really deep uh, jungle rainforest to thrive to survive and so they're very rare now to find in the wild so he decided to dedicate his life really to uh, growing pitcher plants, to preserving pitcher plants, to educating about pitcher plants. And so he has this whole facility here where lots of students come uh, to, well, to make pitcher plants, to eat them like this, but then also to learn about the pitcher plants. It's very educational, walk around the garden and to, to learn about this entire process. So very cool what he's doing and he's about to start stuffing. What an amazing, pocket, pitcher, cup. It's like a natural holster. Yeah, you could fill with just about anything. Uh, so he stuffs it with the rice. Great for kids. Micah's already loving it. Uh, Hands-on activity. But I'm just imagining all the different things you could stuff it with. You can eat it raw. Well, the rice is cooked, but the pitcher plant is still raw. Uh, you can taste it like this, or they're gonna steam it again in the pitcher plant to wilt the pitcher plant, to cook the pitcher plant. Uh, but I gotta try the, the raw version first. And this is a little one, just a little, a uh, one biter. Mmm. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, that is. Awesomely good. The rice is so, so much coconut milk in there. Not too sweet. Mm. And then when you have the coconut milk and the rice in there, you don't get the chalkiness so much of the pitcher plant. It just has this amazing crispness to it. To me, it really feels like green apple skin. But if you could somehow take out the meat of the apple, only have the green skin very, very thin with that sourness. Oh, that's really good though. <laughs> oh man. The pitcher plants are all stuffed. He's gonna steam them for about 10 minutes. And then we'll try it again, the next version of the pitcher plants. Oh, check out this, this fern. Wow, that's like a hammock, bed-sized. I wanna just sit in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead, could we call this one of the world's coolest 
desserts or snack cup holders, this is a contender. What just a cool concept. So unbelievably unique. Uh, and also you can see that the, some of the covers have closed, he said, when it's steamed and they get the heat or it kind of wilts and the, the cap starts to, to close. So there's big ones, there's small ones, every shape is unique. But I had a couple small ones already so I am going big this time. That's like an entire plate of stinky rice in one pitcher. What a shape. Yeah, you love to eat it, Maika? It's really good, huh? <laughs> what a natural casing. It's like a kind of like a pitcher plant sausage. Mm. Oh wow. When it's cooked. So the skin, it's such an amazingly fine skin. It's so thin. It's almost like papery and then that just kind of melts together. I can't believe the, the delicateness, the thinness of it, yet how sturdy it is and how strong it is. Love. The way it holds together, truly impressive. Again, it could have so many uses, so many culinary uses. Yeah, it is almost papery when it's cooked. Talk about a food to go. You could take this anywhere. You could put it in your pocket and it would be fine. Bye, cop. Fresh pitcher plants. Mmm. And the sticky rice stuffed pitcher plant. Steamed. What an experience. Another really big part of what he does here is the education aspect. And so actually a whole student group, we got here an hour before they were scheduled to arrive, uh, but a whole student group has just arrived. He's gonna explain to them about the pitcher plants, about growing plants. Uh, and so he really uses this as an educational platform about the importance of preserving uh, these plants that are rarer and rarer to find. So we're gonna head out from here, but the name of this place is called Suan Kuan Kong garden uh, and he's really cool he can just I love his passion for pitcher plants and what we ate the pitcher plants with the sticky rice it was it was a dessert it was sweet but for me it's the education and it's the possibilities that pitcher plants could have both for culinary but also just to preserve them because they're such incredible such cool plants they are truly fascinating what they do, how they function in the rainforest, and their role that they play. I want to say a big thank you for watching, and remember to subscribe to Big on Spice. I'm going to be publishing more videos, especially focusing on unique fruits and vegetables, and that was a truly unique vegetable. Yes, vegetable. Okay, so that's going to be it for this video. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you on the next video.